splintering is no longer a, um, a process in which we're trying to create carbon copies of the, the older, more established investigator. We're really trying to create a generation of scientists who can bridge areas and who can do really new, innovative, important work. So I think a primary mentor and then maybe one or two uh, other mentors that can help you with specific aspects. Team mentoring is, is a, probably a much more effective way of providing the kind of mentoring that scientists of the future need. Identify yourself to someone that you respect, whose work you res respect, and be specific about why you respect it. And they can understand what you're looking for in terms of guidance in a particular area. You, you need the scientific mentorship, but you also need an accountability mentor. You know, someone that's going to hold your feet to the fire, that um, helps you get your grants out, your papers out, that keeps you accountable to those deadlines you set for yourself. I also think an institutional mentor, someone that knows how to succeed in that institution, is really critical to your development. I think one of the important things is that whoever is your mentor really puts you first and really is thinking in terms of what's going to be best for your career. I think the first thing to do is sort of put aside that you're female. Not that that may or may not be an issue, but I think you can't go in thinking that's going to hurt you. I think we're having more and more opportunities for women and minorities, and I would like to to think that we are to the point now that we would have equal opportunities. One of our internal things we struggle with is whether or not we can just do something, take that risk and jump for it, even when we may not feel ready. I think second, what you have to do is you have to really try to find a niche. You have to project out into the future. Where could, in the future, I break off and cult cultivate something for myself? A second internal one is that we um, often don't own our ambition. You know, we just can't say, I'm going to be president of a university or I'm going to be dean of a college. I think one of the things that you have to guard against is being appointed to something or asked to do something because the group feels they need a woman, an extra woman. You know, there are a lot of external factors. You know, women still don't occupy the C-suites in many companies. You know, only 15% of full professors are women. Uh, you know, but we're, we're going to make strides in that, in that direction, uh, but we have to own our ambition and be ready to take those risks. Work-life balance is really basically time management, and so uh, one of the things that I've done myself and I actually encourage people, trainees to do, is to participate in a time management program. Making time uh, for the people who are important in your life uh, is just critically important to life balance and it keeps you grounded. And the number of people who have asked me, can you really have it all? I think you can. I think you have to be nimble and I think you have to make adjustments at different stages in your life. You know, this isn't a dress rehearsal. This is life, you know, and it's our one shot. I find that if my family knows I have a, a certain day that I'm available for them, then then they're pretty much okay with me working like crazy. My parents were uh, extremely busy professionals. They were physicians. We had dinners together. We took vacations together. So I've kept that in mind very much as, as I've had a family. I think there's some assumptions that you need to evaluate. And one of those assumptions is um, roles. So I am a bad cook. My husband is a fabulous cook. Question answered. I don't cook at all. So planned family time, I think, has been the key for me. Uh, keeps you from thinking that your work is uh you know, the most important thing on the planet. I think it can be thoughtful, sometimes it can be a bit stressful, but I think it is so incredibly rewarding. Life being what it is, uh, not all relationships work out. There are always some difficulties with any relationship, and you just need to be able to discuss that with the mentor and work through them. Um, worst case scenario, you could find a new mentor, um, but I think in most cases it should be able to, um, you should be able to work through that. Sometimes you may think that there's some mentor that um, really is good and you really feel comfortable with connect with, and there are other times where you might 
think that that's the case, but realize that they may not have quite the perspective that you actually need. If an early career investigator has more than one member on their mentoring team, then if one relationship begins to go sour, the other mentor can facilitate a recovery of the relationship and a repair, which should be the first goal, or a, um, another resolution of that relationship if a repair is not uh, possible.